when they teach you about now in history class, the question every student is going to ask first is how the hell we ever thought we could make this work. They're going to look at it with the benefit of hindsight or, I mean, honestly, just the benefit of detachment. And they're going to say, how the hell did anybody ever think a society could operate indefinitely if only half the players agreed to use reality to arbitrate their disagreements? How could that lead to anything other than chaos? And here we are, chaos. These fucking idiots who talked about burning it all down are getting their first glimpse of what that blithe-ass goal actually looks like in action, and now they're pretending that they had something else in mind, some more civil form of lawlessness, I guess. So for context, just in case you're listening to this in the archives or some future diatribes mixtape, I should mention that I'm recording this the same day that a gaggle of knowledge-starved Trump supporters stormed the Capitol building in hopes of violently diverting our current timeline into an alternative reality where Trump won the fucking election. I, I mean, I only hesitate to use the word terrorism because terrorism means using terror to accomplish some goal and I don't even know if they had one of those. I, I, unless they think that if you're on the Senate floor, we have to let you make laws, like there's some magical gavel or some damn thing, then this is just chaos for its own sake. It fails to rise to the level of terrorism and instead simply manages to be terror. I, I mean, consider how stupid this is. This whole bit where they certify this election result, that's, that's a pro forma thing. You know, it'd be like trying to stay out of jail by screaming, I can't hear you at the judge. And yet hundreds of people, possibly thousands of people, were willing to risk arrest and injury to do nothing. I mean, I guess to a certain degree, the chaos is the goal, right? Like very clearly, it's what Trump wanted out of the whole thing. And it plays right into his desire to delegitimize Joe Biden's victory. That being said, I don't think it's fair to call that series of spasmic, visceral urges that Trump has goals. Right. I mean, nobody went to bed on Wednesday feeling any different about the legitimacy of the November election than they did when they woke up. So at best, he got an emotional release out of it. The goal then was that it felt good to him to do. And look, as little sympathy as I have for the assholes that they had to drag away from their slapstick insurrection, I understand entirely how they got there. I mean, everybody in the atheist or skeptical movement kind of has to. It's the shit we've been warning about this whole fucking time. They, they got lost in their own conspiracies. For fuck's sake, the top build speaker at one of the three main pro-Trump rallies was Alex. The juice boxes are turning the frogs gay Jones. Right. That's the level of discernment we're talking about here. And the story that these people have been sold over the last couple of years is that they're the last line of defense against communism, child rape cabals and Satan's source of all the evil in the world. Right. And, and the first rule of conspiracy thinking is that anything that disproves the conspiracy is part of the conspiracy. So once you fall in, it's not like there's a ladder that leads back out. You know, we wasted a lot of years pretending this was some kind of fringe problem. And even now, as we're calling in the National Guard to put down a literal insurrection, one based on nothing but the willful inability of its participants to reason, we stand poised to waste some more years doing the same damn thing. You know, make, make no mistake here. The root of the problem is the idea that we need to respect everybody's beliefs. The, the root of the problem is the fact that we're unwilling as a society to label some people as just fucking wrong. And whether that comes from a misguided sense of balance, an overabundance of humanism, or as I've dedicated my life to arguing, our societal desire to coddle religious thinking, the end result is eventually full detachment from reality. And look, when you're so deep in the hole that you're on Facebook, on your cell phone, warning people that they're going to use a vaccine to track you, it's hard to argue that any amount of contradiction is beyond you. The term post-truth has been with us for a while, but for some reason, most people aren't willing to treat it like the existential crisis that it is, because ultimately this problem exists to wildly variant degrees in every arm of America's political landscape, right? So even at their best, you find people who refuse to recognize the reality that too many people refuse to recognize reality, and many of them will continue to do so even after watching all this shit play out in glorious 1080i. Of course, as Fucked up as this insurrection was to watch, it wasn't the most important news item of the day. That would be the one where, thanks to our listeners' generosity and not one but two fundraisers for the Georgia Senate runoff, both John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock won their respective races and tipped the balance of power in Congress. So, yeah. 
The good news is that in reality, the Democrats will now control both the executive and the legislature. The bad news is that barely more than half of us live in reality anymore. 